637, we say good morning again to Mike Apple over at 680 News for the latest in business news. Mike. Good morning, Tammy. We're seeing uh, markets stabilize after a hiccup yesterday. Following some rhetoric on the trade front, we had uh, Canadian uh, trade officials going to the World Trade Organization to dispute some of the recent maneuvers by the U.S. on various trade practices. And then you had uh, the U.S. sending out some signals that uh, they might just quit the North American Free Trade Agreement this summer, uh, two weeks ahead of the next round of the renegotiation coming up in Montreal. Uh, the worries that the uh, trade uh, deal with the U.S. and Mexico could fall apart send the Canadian dollar tumbling yesterday by three quarters of a cent because this could, theoretically, delay an interest rate hike by the Bank of Canada. The talk prior to all of this rhetoric was that uh, next week we'd see an interest rate hike by the central bank. Maybe not. They might just take a wait and see to see where these trade negotiations go because if you end that big trade deal, well, that could be a major short-term negative impact on the Canadian economy and some of our largest uh, companies that do all sorts of cross-border business. You look at the auto sector specifically, Toyota, for example, exports half a million vehicles into the U.S. every year, and General Motors, uh, uh, exports about uh, 800,000 cars from uh, here in Canada and Mexico into the U.S. auto market. And we saw this play out on the markets in yesterday's trade. Uh, another trade dispute, this time on newsprint coming out of Canadian uh, paper and forest companies into the U.S. They hiked the tariffs on Canadian newsprint exports by 9%. Now, the U.S. newspaper industry is warning of job cuts and shrinking sizes of uh, physical newspapers because their costs are going to go up. So these U.S. trade disputes with other countries sometimes come around and hurt, actually, the U.S. industries. Markets coming off this uh, money-losing trading session yesterday with some worries that China might not be buying so much U.S. debt. Now, uh, China's central bank put out a statement this morning saying uh, that was an erroneous report. It was what they call, quote, fake news sent the bond market into quite a tailspin yesterday, but things have stabilized this morning. Wall Street's coming off the first money-losing session of 2018 for the S&P and the NASDAQ. The Dow yesterday was down just 16 points. The TSX was down by 71. Canadian dollar coming off a loss of three quarters of a cent. It is stayed steady this morning, but back below 80 cents. And cryptocurrencies are dropping sharply this morning after South Korea's uh, central bank said they could impose a ban on cryptocurrency trading platforms. This is the third largest country in the world doing cryptocurrencies right now. Bitcoin is down by as much as 12 percent and some of the other ones are dropping by anywhere from 15 to 16 percent. So lots of volatility there. We'll send it back to the studio. Yeah, we always have to remember, Mike, that uh, so far the NAFTA, uh, the, the word that the U.S. may pull out of NAFTA is still rumor. Uh, and, and it's amazing how the markets oh, react yeah. to rumor. Yeah, it's a, it's a, it's a trading um, ploy at this point, saying, ah, we're just going to walk away entirely. But as I said, Kevin, a lot of times when the U.S. puts these tariffs on uh, imported goods, it comes back around and actually hurts American consumers. So yeah, again, it's a could be a bargaining tactic. And that was another reason why the uh, the markets were down in the U.S. Indeed. yesterday as well, and not just China. All right, yeah. thank you very much. A little You're later welcome. on BT, we're going to be talking to an expert about what the uh, if the U.S. walks away from NAFTA, what it would mean for your wallet. We'll be back.